Growing up as a kid, yeah. All a nigga wanna have was a very bear scarf and three dollars in my pocket. Yeah. Instead, I got beat with a switch, but I don't give a fuck, but it's on my body. Scars all up on me, but I run around from me. What is up, everybody? It's JT Sports Match, you guys, with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be diving into some interesting news concerning the Los Angeles Chargers and Melvin Ingram. Now, before I get into it, make sure that you guys hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because I upload NFL videos, NFL content daily. So, Melvin Ingram is reportedly holding out a training camp for the Chargers because he is currently unhappy with his current contract. Now, this has came to a surprise to a lot of Chargers fans, and it was really unexpected. Now, Melvin Ingram signed the four-year deal where $64 million, $34 million guaranteed a couple of years back. Well, he is now in the final year of that deal where he is set to make $14 million this season. And he has the largest cap hit on the team going into 2020. Now, if you're a Chargers fan, you're wondering, why is Melvin Ingram currently unhappy with his contract? Because he's set to make $14 million this season, so you think he should be fairly happy. But here's the reason why I think Melvin Ingram is holding out a training camp and isn't really happy with the current situation. Melvin Ingram is set to become a free agent in 2021 after this upcoming NFL season. And Melvin Ingram is 31 years old, or he's going on 31 years old, and he's been on the Los Angeles Chargers for a very long time. He is a veteran, and he is a veteran presence and a veteran leader in that locker room. So if you're Melvin Ingram, and this is basically the last contract that you're pretty much going to get in your career, you're looking to kind of get compensated not a lot just something reasonable because you want to feel some kind of security when you're a guy who's paid his dues to a franchise for a good amount of years you know and you're based on your last leg you want some kind of security and melvin ingram is said to be a free agent and i mean this guy has produced at a pro bowl caliber level for like the last five seasons he's made it to the pro bowl the last three years of his career Although he's averaged seven sacks like the last two of those. So, I mean, if you're Melvin Ingram, you're up there in age, and this is basically the last contract that you're going to get before you retire. So, you want to feel some security. Now, the reason why the Chargers situation, when it comes to this franchise, the Chargers may not want to, you know, pay Melvin Ingram because one, he's up there in age, and two, you know, you can use that money elsewhere and probably try to get a younger pass rusher you know guys who may be upcoming free agents come 2021 so i mean if you're the chargers how do you go about this do you pay melvin ingram do you buy it to his demands or do you say hey we're just gonna let you sit out this season so if you're the chargers i don't think you can really let melvin ingram sit out this season now, i know a lot of Chargers fans are gonna be like, oh jt we don't need melvin ingram they're gonna name some young guy that they have on the roster but look melvin ingram is a pretty significant part of this defense rather if you want to accept that or not he has been a pro bowl caliber player for the, like the last four or five years in the nfl and although he still is up there in age i still don't think he's going to have that big of a drop off i still think he's going to have similar numbers that he had last season and just because you're up there in age doesn't mean you can't contribute like calais campbell has had some of the best years of his career in jacksonville despite being you know in his 30s so, I mean, just because you're old doesn't mean, you know, you're going to regress and that you're not going to be anything anymore. So, I mean, if you're the Chargers, I still think you can kind of, you know, give Melvin Ingram a reasonable deal without breaking the bank. Now, Melvin Ingram, I think he understands that, you know, he's not going to get Joy Bosa kind of money. He's not going to be one of the highest paid pass rushers in the NFL. He knows that he's not going to break the bank. I think he's just looking to be reasonably compensated and he just wants some security so he can end his career in Los Angeles because I don't think Melvin Ingram wants to play for another organization in the NFL. I mean, he spent the majority of his career with the Chargers. He got drafted by the Chargers, so I'm pretty sure he wants to retire in Los Angeles. Plus, Los Angeles is one of the most beautiful cities in the world so i don't think he wants to leave los angeles i just think he wants some kind of security now if you're the chargers do you want to give him you know a different contract at least right now because if you give him a new deal right now he may go ahead and just completely regress and just fall off the face of the earth and he may just go from having seven sacks a season to two or three sacks a season so that's the fear when it comes to giving melvin ingram a new contract but if you're the chargers you know 
if I'm the general manager for the Chargers, I would kind of try to, you know, talk to him and kind of renegotiate the last year of his deal so I can get him on the field because, you know, this defense, I think it's going to be really good with both Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa on the field. And I know you guys are going to mention another young player on the roster, but I mean, he's not Melvin Ingram. He has produced at a Pro Bowl caliber level like Melvin Ingram for like the last five seasons. So, I mean, I believe that Joey Bosa is good with Melvin Ingram on the field. Now, Joey Bosa is still going to be good and still going to be one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, regardless if Melvin Ingram plays or not. But I think it kind of helps Joey Bosa a little bit when Melvin Ingram is on the field because teams can't specifically focus all on Joey Bosa when Melvin Ingram is on the field because they do. That's going to open up um, opportunities for Melvin Ingram to get pressure on the quarterback. And if Melvin Ingram is, you know, hot and teams got to focus on him, then that opens up, you know, room for Joey Bosa to make plays and get pressure on the quarterback. So I think both of these guys kind of make each other better, even though Joey Bosa is the better player. But, I mean, I think Melvin Ingram is a pretty big part of that Los Angeles Chargers defense. There's no way you see, you can say, hey, let's trade Melvin Ingram and let one of our young guys step up because you don't really know if you're going to get that kind of production. Because, remember, Melvin Ingram has been a Pro Bowl caliber player for the last five years. Now, he's made it to the Pro Bowl the last three years, but really he's played on a Pro Bowl caliber level for the last five. So, I mean... It's no telling if that young guy that you're going to insert in to replace Melvin Ingram, if he does sit out, is going to give you that kind of Pro Bowl caliber production, despite Joey Bosa being on the opposite side of him. So, I mean, if you're the Chargers, you're in a really awkward spot. Because, I mean, Melvin Ingram, he's not looking to get a boatload of money. He's just looking for some kind of security. And if you're the Chargers, you know, do you want to pay him that even though he's at the last leg of his career? And can he keep up his Pro Bowl caliber play until he retires? So, I mean, if I'm the Chargers, like I said earlier, I would kind of, you know, talk to Melvin Ingram. I would renegotiate his contract, not for the future, but I would kind of, you know, work it around so he can get some incentives this year. If he reaches those incentives, you know, he can get some extra money and kind of try to rework the last year of his contract so he can get on the field and play. And then, you know, at the end of the season, then we can discuss future terms because that's all. This is what this is about. This isn't what he's making this season. It's about the future. He wants some financial security so he can feel, you know, a little bit of relief that he doesn't have to worry about, you know, getting released or getting cut by the charges anytime soon. So this is what this is about. It's not about what he's making this year. It's about the future. He wants to feel protected. And, you know, if you're the Chargers, do you really want to give him that? So, I mean, if I'm the Chargers, I would go ahead and try to rework this deal so I can make him happy for at least this season and then go back to the table at the end of the 2020 season and then see if we can get a three-year deal worked out. Because I, Melvin Ingram, he's not worth a lot. Although he is a little bit up there in age, he's still a pretty good pass rusher. He's a Pro Bowl caliber pass rusher, so you still got to pay him pretty reasonably. You just can't, you know, pay him anything. So, I mean, if I'm the L.A. Chargers, I give him a three-year deal worth $25 million, $16 million guaranteed guaranteed or like 13 million guaranteed so either 12 or 15 million guaranteed is what i would give melvin ingram so i would give him a three-year deal worth 25 maybe you know 28 million dollars maybe 30 maybe a little bit of a reach but you know pass rushers still are really important even if you know they are a little bit up there in age because of you know it's a passing lead so you do need to have a pass rush. so i mean i think i would give him like a deal between 25 million and $27 million, and then 30 will probably be the max. So somewhere between 25 and 27 is where I would try to give Melvin Ingram a deal. That would make it worth three years, and then I would probably give him like a lot of money guaranteed, like $15, $16 million guaranteed, and then put some incentives in there because that's what this is about. This is about some security for, you know, the remaining years that he has left in the NFL. It's not about this season. It's about the future. So if I'm the Chargers, that's how I would go about the situation. I would talk to him because you really do need Melvin Ingram on the field. Like, I know this defense is great. You got Linville Joseph. You got Jerry Tillery. You got Chris Harris Jr. You, you got Duran Jameson, you know, at the safety spot. I already talked about how great this defense is going to be this season. But this defense is going to be great when Melvin Ingram is on the field as well. And without Melvin Ingram, I do think this defense would kind of take 
take a little bit of a step back because I do think that Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram both benefit with each other, both on the opposite side of each other when they're both on the field. So, I mean, I know Chargers fans are going to be a little bit upset by that. And I know as a fan, you know, you're not, your mind isn't built to, you know, think about the player. Your mind is more built towards what's best for the team instead of what's, you know, trying to help out the player. And I can understand that. But on this channel, you know, I like to give both perspectives. I don't just want to, you know, be all one-sided when it comes in terms of the team. I want to be able to, you know, give you guys both arguments of both sides of the argument and let you guys go from there. So, I mean, if you're the Chargers, how do you handle this Melvin Ingram situation? Do you renegotiate or do you just say, hey, you can go ahead and sit out the rest of the season. We don't need you. Because the Chargers do kind of need Melvin Ingram because he has played at a pretty high level for the last five years of his career. So you guys let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section down below. Make sure that you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.